Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. We've got a little tech tip for you and it has to do with master cylinders. Let's get started. Now before you go ahead and install your brand new master cylinder, you're going to need to make sure you get all the air out of the system. To do that, usually you do a bench bleed and you would need a special kit that you can get that's going to go right on here. It's going to have some hoses that come up and then they're going to go back into the reservoir. The reason for that is because as you push in on this area right here, it's going to force fluid this way and it's going to come right out these areas right there. Once the fluid and air comes out, of course you would want to catch it or whatever at that point, but once you release the brake pedal, it's going to try sucking back in this way right here. And of course if there was no lines that brought it back up into the fluid here, it's going to draw air back in and you're going to keep pumping and pumping and you're never going to get anywhere trying to bleed this out. With that said, if you were going to be replacing the master cylinder and you're just doing it in your driveway, you probably don't want to go ahead and buy the kit that you can get that will do this because it's going to cost you over $100 more than likely. 1A wants to help you save money, that's what we do. So we went out, we grabbed a couple simple parts that you can find pretty much anywhere and that's going to make this job much easier, much cheaper and much more efficient overall. Now what you need to do is you need to find fittings that are going to fit right into the master cylinder. Sometimes they're the same size, sometimes they're different, so make sure you bring the master cylinder with you when you go. You'll make sure that they screw right in. That's great. The next thing we want to pay attention to is right inside where the master cylinder ports are. You want to see right down where that line's going to connect onto and see what type of flare you're going to have to make. There's two different types of flares that you would have. You'd either have a bubble flare, which if you were to look in there, it would kind of look like it's inverted and that way there you could put a bubble flare into it and then of course seat it. This one right here looks as though it has like a little cone, so that means that it's an inverted flare. With that said, that's the type that we're gonna have to create. So of course we grab fittings that are meant for inverted flares. Now we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna create the line. I just have some of this 3 16 brake line right here. This is gonna work perfectly. Go just like that. You can start with whichever fitting you want to use and now we're going to flare this so it's an inverted flare like I said before. Let's get our kit on here. When you make a flare, you want to make sure that you have a little bit of the tube sticking out past and a good way to judge how far you need it to go past is just by looking at the actual tool itself. It has like a little lip. If you line up the tube with that lip, it should have plenty sticking out. You don't want more than the lip though. Too much is not good either. Make sure this is nice and tight. This one's nice and tight. You would take your little bobble there, the adapter, slide it on there. And then of course, we'll put our tool on. Now we're gonna watch right along the tool and we're gonna make sure that this is crushing down and it's not sliding the tube out of the tool. All right, that's completely down. Now I'm gonna loosen it up. I'll remove the, the adapter. And now we're just gonna crush it in with the driver here. And that's gonna make it inverted. Okay. Feels good. We'll get our tool off of here. There's our flare. There's our fitting. This looks great. That's gonna go right into that end. So the next thing we need to do is figure out exactly how much of this line we need to make it so we can go from the entry point where the line's gonna go into the master cylinder and then it's gonna come up and around and into here. And when it comes around, you don't want it to just sit over the top. It needs to actually be physically down and inside that fluid. So I'm gonna make a little bend. And of course you can use a tool to bend it if you're worried about crimping the line. If you crimp the line, that's gonna of course cause a restriction and you're gonna have a major issue. So I'll just start this in, just a teeny bit. And then I'm gonna come up just over the top of it and then I'll kind of guesstimate approximately how much I want to cut off so I can bring it right down and in there. Give it 
pool already. Let's see. I'll go right about here. I'll give myself a little extra. It's easier to trim some off than it is to try to put more on. Perfect. So now we would just bend this. And like I said, make sure that it goes right down and inside that master cylinder as low as it can go. That looks very good. Now you would tighten this. We'll tighten that with a wrench in a minute, but first we're gonna create this line the same exact way. Okay, so this looks great. If you were to look inside, you can see that those lines go almost all the way down to the bottom, but not necessarily the bottom. The only thing that's super important is to make sure that the ends are going to be fully sitting inside a fluid at all times during your bleed process. So now we're just going to tighten these up, use your corresponding wrench, whatever size fitting you use is going to make a difference. All right, that bottomed out, teeny bit more, and that's it. Same thing over here. Okay. Now that we have this created and it's sitting in there perfectly, they're nice and tight and there's no way for any air to make its way in between this area right here, you would move along to bleeding out the system. To do that, you're gonna need to have this firmly secured in some way. You can either put it inside a nice vise like this one, or of course, in some instances, you could actually connect it right into the vehicle and it would be probably much easier that way. So if we were gonna go with the vise, you just probably put one ear in here like this. Make sure you get as much grip as possible nice and tight. The next thing you would do would be to fill up the master cylinder. I wouldn't go all the way to the top, leave maybe like a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch there. And then after that, this is the super important part. You're gonna wanna push right here on this area. And when you do that, you don't necessarily wanna use something that's hard, jagged, or even sharp. You don't wanna use anything that's gonna mar this up inside there, cause it could cause an imperfection, and of course it may not function properly. Also, if you were to use something sharp and you happen to slide out of the divot, as you had already pushed in, you might mess up a seal. So we'll stay away from using something like that. Something that would be recommended to use would be like a nice piece of brass like this, something that's much softer than the metal that's involved right here. So in case you did happen to slip, you're not gonna cause any damage. And you could also use a wooden dowel. So now the method we're gonna use is put it right in the vehicle and we'll do it that way. Let's install this. just like that. Now we're gonna mount this in with those two nuts. Okay, that one's bottomed out. So now what we're gonna do is fill the master cylinder with the manufacturer specified fluid. For us personally on this vehicle, it's DOT3. It's super important to pay attention to the inside of the master cylinder because there is two separate areas. They need to both be full. So now we have it securely mounted, and of course it's filled. While it's in the vehicle, we're gonna go ahead and slowly push down on that brake pedal. As we push down, you're gonna be seeing air getting pushed up through these lines, which of course you won't be able to see through the lines, but you will be able to see air bubbles coming up inside the fluid. I'm gonna go nice and slow, push all the way to the floor, pause, and then I'm gonna release that brake pedal nice and slow as well. Every time I press, it's gonna force the air and fluid in, and every time I release, it's gonna draw some of the fluid back this way. So now I'm just gonna take a nice rag, put it under here so I can catch in the majority of the fluid that might leak out. We're gonna remove our lines right here because we've completed the bleeding process. And then at that point, we would of course connect these in and then bleed out the rest of the vehicle's system. There we go. That one. 
start it right in there. All right, that one's nice and tight. Let's do the other one. So now we would just top off the fluid. We'll put on the cover. Now we want to bleed the rest of the brake system. Okay friends, so we had a lot of fun making this video for you. Hopefully you learned a little bit of something along the way. If you did, drop me a like and leave me a comment in the comment section because I'd love to hear from you. While you're at it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell. That way there you can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.